expression is thwarted at the city county building this morning, but not by city officials. Shortly after a self-proclaimed witch set up her display of faith, it was stolen. Jeremy Rogalski is live at the city county building with more on this story. Jeremy? Well, Bruce, even though self-proclaimed witch Tracy Eads was not advocating Satanism or evilness, with the pinnacle she had set up here on this easel this morning, it certainly is clear that someone didn't think she had the right to express her beliefs. It's just another example of the religious controversy that has been brewing here throughout the holiday season. The controversy began when the Jewish community appealed a court ruling banning religious symbols in the city county building and won a temporary victory to put up the menorah during Hanukkah. That opened the door for other faiths to display their religious symbols, like self-proclaimed witch Tracy Eads, who won approval this morning to put up this pentacle, supporting the Wicca faith, which advocates preserving Mother Earth. It was opened up for, for the... Um another religion therefore I felt like I had the right to do it also Christians are trying to do just that Reverend Wayne Harris Christians are trying to do just that Reverend Wayne Harris of the Mount Olive Baptist Church submitted his request to display a cross in the lobby they would have to allow me to do that um, or else you know we can then take it to another level uh, but they'll have to uh, if they allow this they have to allow a cross and I will hear nothing else. But not everyone is so receptive to these open forms of religious expression. Two hours after the pentacle was put up, it was stolen. And then another display appeared, this one in protest from Steve Schroeder, a monotheist who thinks religion should be kept in the church. The door is open and, and you have all the other, the other deities coming in. It's, it's not a, this is basically a protest. Instead of having a sign or doing something else, the sign basically protests federally enforced polytheism. Now all of the applications for displays like the pentacle and the one by Reverend Harris will be reviewed by city attorneys who within a day or two will decide whether to allow them or not. And that process will continue at least until mid-January when an appellate court in Chicago will uh, make a ruling on whether to enforce the original policy here at the city county building, which is not to allow any re forms of religious expression. Bruce, back to you. All right, Jeremy Rogalski, we'll have more on this later in our noon news hour. Thank you, Jeremy. You're welcome. Yeah. Five-sided star painted on a white board. It's called a pentacle. It's a symbol of the Wicca religion, which is associated with witchcraft. But shortly after she left the symbol on an easel, someone stole it. That's probably somebody just didn't feel like I should be allowed to express myself. I'm not of the normal, you know, religious standards, you know, so I, that's my guess. You know, somebody just didn't feel like it belonged there. And in the meantime, while a police report is being filed, the building authority has also approved a display that features a printed Bible verse. And late this morning, a delegation led by the Reverend Wayne Harris sought permission to display a cross. Approval is pending. Thou shalt not kill, one of ten commandments Christians around the world live by. And the Christian Family Association is on a national crusade to post the commandments in government buildings. They say God's law should be the law of the land. And today, one of their most vocal supporters, a circuit court judge, pleaded their case in Indianapolis. Teresa Joyce reports. Alabama Judge Roy Moore travels across the country arguing for the right to display the Ten Commandments in courtrooms and government buildings. If an acknowledgment of God violated the United States Constitution, the money in your pocket would be unconstitutional. The Pledge of Allegiance, which includes under God in the pledge, would be unconstitutional. Moore told a crowd of about 200 people at the Indiana State Fairgrounds that despite what critics say, posting the Ten Commandments in government buildings is not a violation of the separation of church and state. In no way has it ever been true that an acknowledgment of God, which is all what, what the Ten Commandments is, it acknowledges the Supreme Being, could be a violation of the United States Constitution. But not everyone in attendance supported his views. And what you believe the, uh, the commandments should be written on the hearts of men and not displayed on the walls of government like a, uh, like a collection of butterflies with the other religions and their, their graven images. 
The rally was sponsored in part by the Indiana Christian Coalition and the Indiana Family Institute. In Indianapolis, Teresa Joy, 6 News. Three Indiana counties, Hendricks, Grant, and Putnam, have adopted a resolution stating the Ten Commandments are principles that all people, regardless of religion, should live by. The State House Law a tranquil, stately garden of stone, now a religious battleground. The posting of the Ten Commandments represents an establishment of religion. It's not unusual to see the commandments posted in public buildings across Indiana. The ICLU is opposed to rebuilding a commandments monument on this foundation. We all recognize, of course, that all of us have the right to celebrate religion our own way. But when it is the state of Indiana that is celebrating religion, then, we're, then we look to see whether the state is establishing religion. We're very satisfied that it's constitutional. In March, Governor O'Bannon signed a law allowing the commandments to be posted if they're displayed with other historical documents. Uh, it, it's very obvious that the Ten Commandments are an underpinning of America's system of, of justice and certainly of our culture. Right now it doesn't look like much. If all goes as planned, construction could begin by July 1st. Now, all along the state has maintained this is a debate about history, not religion. But those parties filing suit today say it is precisely the opposite. In 1991, Stephen Schroeder went to jail for defacing and toppling the old monument. And as a taxpayer, and the constitutional law, state constitutional law says I shouldn't have to support any religious ministry against my consent. But some wonder if the commandments go beyond this church-state debate. It says a lot about uh, what people should, what kind of rules people should follow in just about being a better person.